Hi everyone, Ken from Orion Telescopes. Um, so I hope you don't mind the uh, slightly lower budget uh, video production value of this one. Um, we're in the shelter in place, uh, we're still in California, we're in the shelter in place, so I'm doing this video introduction from home. Um, anyways, uh, I wanted to tell you about the Starshoot Mini 6.3 uh, megapixel color and monochrome camera. These are new, smaller form factor uh, cameras that we've come out with we took some of the technology of the bigger ones, the G10, the G16, and put it into a smaller body here. It doesn't have the active cooler that the G10 or G16 has. That makes it smaller, lighter weight, uh, less power requirement, less expensive, uh, but still very, very functional. Uh, first and foremost, it's a planetary camera, right? It's a 6.3 uh, megapixel CMOS chip with a uh, 2.4 micron pixel, so really small pixels, very high resolution, great for lunar planetary uh, imaging uh, and video, videography. Um, but the exposure range on these new CMOS chips is very wide. Our previous planetary cameras usually stopped at maybe even a half second or just a couple of seconds, so they weren't sensitive, sensitive enough to see deep sky objects. But this guy actually is. This is uh, based on the uh, Sony IMX-178 uh, chip, and it comes in two versions, a color and a monochrome version. Um, short exposure moon and planets, and then it'll do up to 1,000 seconds for long exposure stuff, too. So uh, deep sky objects come into, uh, into the realm of what this thing can do as well. Now, it's not cooled, like I said, so it's going to have more noise than the more expensive G10, G16, because as you cool the chip, um, you get less noise inherently in the in the electronics, um, but the that Sony IMX one seventy eight chip is pretty low noise to begin with, and these newer the new technology of CMOS cameras is pretty amazing. So you could do long exposures with this, um, and everybody's stacking frames anyway. So you don't just take one image because uh, that'll be relatively noisy, especially if it's not cooled. But you stack a bunch of them together, and it really smooths out the image and brings out the detail. So when you're stacking with something like this, it, it works really well. Um, and another thing that I discovered with this, I, I'm a little late to the party, but a lot of people are talking about this EAA imaging, um, electronically assisted astronomy. Um, it, it sort of throws out the window the old school thing of you need to do long exposures and you need to guide and you need to do flat frames and dark frames and process them and then you get your expo your, your final image the next day. I mean, that's all real, real, real and good and you get a great image that way, but it, it's not really live, right? You don't get to see much um, uh, in the here and now when you're out the telescope. Well, EAA kind of uh, throws that out the window and allows you to do some of that. So this is the, the color version. I was out um, with an equatorial mount that was not perfectly polar aligned um, I used the, uh, the uh, MacNute 190, which is f5.3, and I pointed it at M82, and the moon was like three or four days before full. I mean, it was like the worst conditions to image with. Um, so M82 was here, and the moon was over here like 90 degrees apart, and it was really bright outside. Um, you, you can boost up the gain, giving you more sensitivity, but also more noise. But remember, we're gonna be stacking, so that doesn't really matter. Um, and I just took 15 second exposures. And I didn't even guide, I didn't take dark frames. I used a program called SharpCap, uh, which you can use with these guys because this is ASCOM compatible. So not only the software that comes with it uh, works to control the camera, but anything that runs an ASCOM uh, camera will do it. So SharpCap, Nebulosity, um, sequence, Gener sequence Generator Pro, all sorts of different uh, uh, programs, Max and DL. Um, and SharpCap has this really cool feature called Live Stack. So it, it takes the initial image, and then it waits for the next image. So 15 seconds later, it grabs another image, it downloads it, it automatically aligns and registers and stacks the image and gives you a smoother image. And then 15 seconds later, the next frame comes in. And so I just sat there watching M82 build up on the screen over several minutes. And in like a minute or two, I could see color in the thing. I could see the little red splotchy H2 region in the middle of uh, M82. And it was amazing what you could do in a moonlit sky. Now, this wasn't a uh, super long exposure, really deep uh, uh, image of the North America where you could see all the little knots and nodules and you could blow it up to 16 by 20 in your wall. This was a live image that you get to see on the laptop in real time um, and kind of enjoy the sky um, as you're sitting there. So EAA, I highly recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. And a, and a, a camera like this can do it. Um, the... 
you have to decide which one you want to get, the mono or the color. The one-shot color, very simple, um, easy to use. You don't need to worry about different color filters in order to expose through uh, to get the final color image. It's just quick and easy, right? So uh, the one-shot color is probably the, 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 the simplest of the, the two to get. If you want the most sensitivity, however, um, the mono version does it. Uh, so all the pixels see all the light because it doesn't have that Bayer matrix, that little layer up there that sort of separates out the different colors and, and kind of combines them on the fly in the camera to give you the colors. So the advantage there is it's, it's, it's much more sensitive. But if you want a full color image, you've got to shoot the object through a red filter, then you got to shoot it through a blue filter or a green filter, and then a blue filter. The order doesn't matter, but red, green, blue. Uh, and then you process them later in software to stack and um, get your final result. So you get to choose which one you want, the most sensitivity or the most convenience in just getting a, a color image. Uh, it's USB 3, I think I might have mentioned that. Um, you've got the USB 3 port and you've got a guide port. So you could use this as a as an auto guider if you're shooting through a DSLR or other, some other astro camera. So very, very functional. Inch and a quarter nozzle, slips into any inch and a quarter focuser. Underneath is uh, a C-mount thread. So if you have something that takes, uh, that has a, a male C-mount, this will thread directly on it for, for a direct threaded connection. But I think for the most part, the easiest way to do it is just slip it into an inch and a quarter focuser. Oh, frame rate. Because it's USB 3, uh, full frame rate up to, depending on your computer, about 59 frames per second um, at full frame, which is like over 3,000 by 2,000. Um, and of course, if you crop down around the planet when you're doing a, a, a fast video frame rate, you can get 150 frames per second, 150 plus, um, because it, uh, at that point when you're subframing or cropping, it really uh, boosts the throughput. All right, um, I think that's all I wanted to say about this. This is the Starshoot uh, Mini 6.3 uh, megapixel. You get your choice of color or monochrome. All right, stay safe, and uh, as always, clear skies.